blessed afternoon to relatives, friends, and supporters here at the St. Catherine Anglican Church, and those joining us electronically, particularly in the rest of Barbados, England, Canada, and the United States, as we celebrate the life of Chantel Jordan. I am Marva Cossie, Chantel's cousin. On Wednesday, March 3rd, shortly after Chantel died, someone responded by saying, gone too soon. Familiar words in such circumstances. But ever since then, I've been reflecting on the cliche, gone too soon, what the phrase really means, and what message it conveys. It is usually used in reference to someone who dies young, and yes, Chantelle was young, only 32. She had bounced eagerly into this world as dawn was breaking on the first day of 1989. Her mom, Vashti Jordan, recalled that she was about the third baby born in Barbados that year. But not surprisingly, Vashti declined to be pictured in the press, as is her nature. Chantelle was an only was an only child to her mother, but not an alone child, because she was brought up in an extended family, guided by matriarch Doris Bancroft, who ensured that strong family values were passed down the generation. In that household, Chantel was loved by her Aunt Vaughn, Uncles, uncles Mitchell and Sherlan, who took on the older brotherly roles, and great uncle Patrick, aka Bill, who at times had that fatherly influence. At three years old, Chantel started her education at St. Catherine's Primary, along with her cousin Cheryl, who was also from the same home, and they developed a sisterly bond. Very soon afterwards, this active three-year-old had her first encounter with cancer, and prayers went up to God to heal this innocent child. It was from then that her determination and strength of character started to emerge. It grew to the extent that over the years, friends and relatives remarked on her bravery and her willingness to get on with life rather than dwell on negatives for like her favorite color blue, which focuses us on the sun on a clear, sunny day, she gave off rays of pos positivity. Therefore, as I reflect on the cliche gone too soon, I recognize that in most instances, the person to whom it is referenced is nearly always a victim. And being true to Chantel character, Chantel's character, pardon me, her memory cannot be associated with the victim. She never displayed a victim mentality, playing the oh poor me or the I got cancer card was not in her game plan. Consider for a moment that ironically, this illness started in her brain, which we see as the seat of her intelligence. But yet, although it was in her brain, it never quelled her, dis her desire to be educated, though it threatened to restrain her academic pro progress. Chantelle began her secondary education at the St. Anthony School, and after that institution closed, she moved on to the Seventh-day Adventist School. At 13, her education was interrupted again in a major way. She missed many months but was able to achieve enough knowledge and academic know-how to ensure that she was a fully functioning, literate, and employing, an employable member of the community, and she worked in the retail sector. Chantelle lived life. She was a life well. And like any typical in teenager, she enjoyed life wholesome fun boat cruises and fets, going to the beach, rest, dressing up to the nines, latest lifestyle. Yes, Chantel, you were a stepper. 
She also visited England and related with pleasure her experiences meeting and hanging out with her aunts, uncles, and cousins there. Along with the USA and Canada, another trip there was on her to-do list, though she was adamant that she wasn't going back into the London Eye. For as she remarked, although it allowed you to see lots of the country, when you disembark, it left you crumple up like paper for several minutes. Therefore, if as I believe, one of a eulogy's objectives is to highlight areas of a person's character that can be used as an example, I would point to her courage in the face of adversity. Yes, I'm speaking about her willingness to get on with the business of living and avoiding a poor me mentality. At three, 13 or 33, when that cancer fought her hardest, and in between, when hospital visits and tests were her norm, she never displayed a, men a victim mentality. In fact, her mother reasoned that perhaps her illness made her strong to face all the other trials in life, and she passed, tried to pass that on to other people, for she would always say, what is stressing for? Don't stress. No wonder her recent Facebook condolences speak to her ready smile, her positive, outgoing nature, her willingness to make friends and to carefully nurture those relationships. But that did not mean she would let the need to tighten a friendship get in the way of doing what she considered to be right. Chantel was fierceless in her defense of the truth and didn't mind calling out a friend, relative, or even a stranger who she felt was doing wrong, but she was willing to forgive, willing to forgive. In fact, she preached forgiveness with a zeal which I would liken to Apostle Paul spreading Christianity, and she practiced it with as much enthusiasm as is humanly possible. Allow me for a moment to give you one example. Her uncle, Sherlyn, recalled that there was a period in their lives when they could not see eye to eye. And one day, he saw her walking, coming towards us, towards him. He was in Bayfield by the shop, which is about 200, mile, 200 yards away from where they live. So he put on the walk now stance. But she came to him and she said, I want you to forgive me for any wrong thing that I have done, anything that I have done that hurt you or caused you pain. And he said, he was overcome with emotion. He broke down and cried. For here was Chantel, though in her 20s, she was a child to him and yet she was leading him by example. So they did the right thing. They hugged each other, asked each other forgiveness, cry, and the love continued. If that, therefore, is an example that you and I can draw from her. Chantel was convinced that there should be loyalty and strength and all the good things that would bind a family together. And she preached that, and we saw it in the way she regarded her mother. A few months ago, after ensuring that her mother was out of earshot, she spoke about her, her, how her mother face fell on hearing what was one of the final prognoses by her doctor. Chantel said, girl, I wanted to cry bad but I had to hold it. Because I don't want my mother to be in pain. I have to be strong for her. And I want everybody to be strong for her and to hold her there when I'm no more. Today, we celebrate this life earmarked by strength, a willingness to hurdle life's trials with faith. 
Such a life was made possible with the support of many people. Therefore, on the family's behalf, I want to thank all those who contributed to her life. Many were mentioned in the published obituary, but in addition, I want to publicly acknowledge those school meals workers who pulled extra weight to ensure that Vashti could accompany Chantel to her many hospital visits, namely Marva Allen, Corinne Ford, Karen Eswick, Kim Payne, Maxine Barrow, and Lenan Knight. Also, I want to thank the Twin Arts, Joan and Olga, Antoinette Avely, who proved that social distance mean, never means out of reach or unable to touch someone with love. I also want to thank her neighbors and the people of Bayfield, especially Alma Blackman, Rosalind, and Sharon Innes. Last, but, therefore, uh, but certainly never least, and more so, most important, we thank God for her life and for her examples. As we say goodbye, we human beings are likely to add gone too soon, but Proverbs 3, 5 to 16 instructs, instructs us to trust in the Lord with all her heart, rather than to lean on her own understanding. Lord, we therefore recognize that you are in control and that many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Your will be done, Lord. Rest in peace, Chantel. Fly home. Amen. to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? Here ends the first reading.
live also in me. In my father's house has many rooms. If they were not so, I would have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of the Lord.
We speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This evening, we are here to give God all the thanks and praise for the life and work of our departed sister, Chantel. And on behalf of myself and the entire congregation of St. Catherine, on behalf of Reverend Kathian Wedderburn, who is unable to be here this evening, I would like to express our deepest condolences, deepest sympathy to her immediate family, friends, and loved ones. From the moment we are conceived. Our life is a journey, one that will come to an end. In fact, we could say that from the moment of our conception, we are dying. And the fact that we will die is the only fact we can know for sure about our future. As young people, we all spend time speculating about the future. We have a tendency to believe that we will grow up. And we forget that no one has the right to assume that they will live three score and ten and die in the fullness of old age. Indeed, we have not the slightest idea of what it is that will take us out. Whether we will accede to some unpleasant disease or die in perfect health. The perception that any human being can know what lies ahead of them is completely an illusion. For the truth, as opposed to the illusion, is that no person knows their future, what will happen in the next minute, never mind the next evening or the next day. And one of the uncomplicated perceptions of religion is that only God, the almighty creator, has the full knowledge of our future and our fate. He alone knows the answer to every single thing. And our share of that knowledge is no more nor less than he chooses to reveal to us. The biblical story of the book of Job is a full outline of the philosophy that humans are tested by God in all sorts of ways, including sickness, loss of fortune, disease, and death. All humans come under this test, no matter how saintly they happen to be. For Job was a very saintly man, yet he suffered terribly in his lifetime. And even though he could think of no sin for which to repent, because of his saintliness, he refused to curse God, but patiently accepted his suffering, just like our sister Chantel, as part of God's will. And did his best not to feel resentful. In conclusion, God pointed out to him that patience and acceptance 
were the correct attitude when confronted with inexplicable shifts of fortune. Since no human being could possibly know the truth about God or his motivation. So the full story lies entirely beyond human experience. Job accepted this and in his acceptance of God's will for him, God changed his circumstances. And I believe this evening that we can say the same for Chantel. For just like Job, she accepted her fate, ever believing that God is in control of her life and of our future. So my friends in Christ, we cannot assume that God will intervene and take away miraculously the suffering, the tests, and the mortality of an individual despite how noble that soul appears to be. One has only to think of the desperate prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he prayed so earnestly that he might have this cup removed from him, that his sweat broke out of him like drops of blood. And even in his case, the experience of death was not to be avoided. And he concluded his prayer in acceptance. Not my will, but thine be done. For many people watched him die, laughed at his fate, tormented him by challenging him to come down from the cross. They tried to make the point that if he really was the son of God, then God would save him. And so the Christian faith is built up on the belief that God did not save him, and he died. There was no miracle of intervention, even for, for Jesus. However, there was the greater miracle, the demonstration that even though we have passed we have to pass through death, that death is not the end. On this road of human life, there are so many fears. Fears of losing control. The fear of doing the wrong thing and making a fatal error. Fear of pain. Fear of indignity. And the ultimate terror, fear of giving up the self at the moment of death. And we need not torment ourselves with guilt if we react with shock and fear, for this is natural. Even the example of Jesus showed that it was natural. And Jesus reacted with horror and dismay, just like the same as we all do today. My friends in Christ, a person who has been touched by death can never be the same again. And whether it is facing up to the loss of a loved one or being so ill oneself that one is merging more with the afterlife than the life of this world, once awareness of mortality has entered the human consciousness, the human changes. And the attitude to those loved ones also changes. The possibility of losing life makes everything we love and have so much more precious. We are haunted by the thought that the end of our earthly lives may leave unfinished tasks incomplete relationships and we are anxious about those we will leave behind who depend upon us how will they survive without us what will they do and how will they cope friends and family 
of Chantel. I assure you that the same God who walked beside you up the mountain top is the same God who will stand by your side in your various cold and dark valleys. It's the same God who is here to comfort you in this your time of sorrow. For King David declared with great confidence, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. It is in these times, in the times of the valley, that we so often lose hope in the God that we believe in. It is in such times that we question God like Job, searching for answers. But my friends in Christ, God answers us just like he answered Job. Where were you when I created the heavens and the earth? Family and friends, God will stand beside you as your rock and defender. In your times of emptiness, for only you will experience this loss. But you are assured that God will empower you with his grace that someday soon you will again experience life on the mountaintop. And as we reflect on the life and work of our dearly departed sister, let us call to mind our own lives, lives that are caught up with the busy affairs of this world. Are we spiritually prepared for death when it comes? Or are we too busy trying to understand the complexities of life? And I challenge you this evening to think about the outcome of your own life. Were you just created to enjoy the pleasures of this world? To eat, drink, and be merry? My friends, God in creating us must have a purpose for our lives. The scripture recalls that we were created in the image and likeness of Almighty God. So God continues to tap on our hearts this evening in order to achieve and fulfill his plan for our lives. His plan is to draw all humanity back to himself so that all of us will become recipients of his eternal kingdom. My friends in Christ, Winston Churchill once said, no one cheers his own birth and no one mourns his own death. I am ready to meet my maker. But whether my maker is prepared for the great ordeal of meeting me is another matter. Oh, brother, brothers and sisters, our sister challenges us to live lives fitting for the kingdom of God. And our respect and our appreciation, therefore, cannot or should not be expressed by the tipping of a glass, by the eating of some food, but our acknowledgement of her life must be reciprocated by the quality of life that she lived. Rest eternal, grant unto Chantel, O Lord, She and all the faithful departed through the tender mercies of God rest in peace.
behalf of the soul of the Lord, the sister Shanta Nika, and mercies of the living God. Please turn to page 7. We pray for those who mourn and we commemorate the departed. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your entire life. Lord, in your mercy, May we be strengthened in our faith to live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son and be ready when he calls us the fullness of life. faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we share with them in your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now stand to the final hymn. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Oh sorry, I apologize. The commendation precedes that.
Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help? But to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. Ensure in certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God, our sister Chantel. We commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister Chantel and we ourselves, may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory, through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, Raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in him and at the resurrection receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our Mediator and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Rest eternal, grant to Chantel, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon her. May she and all the faithful departed through the tender mercies of God rest in peace. Amen.
Standing on the top.
for the praise of your people. As we remember before you, Chantel, our sister, and grant that we who confess your name on earth may with her be made perfect in the kingdom of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious unto her. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon her and give her peace. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, thanks be to God. On behalf of the Jordan family, we'd like to thank all of you for coming and do get home safe and also stay safe. Thank you. I live in two things the way when I pass. Mm. That's in Catherine School there. Mm -hmm. And that's where I burn a bush there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. And I would have told you that I never once got to school there. <laughs> See the distance.